I am calm. I am calm. This is the fifth time I'm recording this video now. Because I've been interrupted and I am calm. I'm joking. Well, I'm not, but I'm kidding around. Here we have the Beatles Myth Magical Mystery Tour. What can I say, you know? I haven't seen the film. Don't, don't, uh, don't interrogate, not interrogate, prosecute me, that's the word. Don't, don't put me on trial. Never seen the film. But, I do have the record. Now, in the US, this was released as a full album. But in the UK, it wasn't. It was just an EP. So when the Beatles, or their publishing, or Apple Records, or whoever came to standardise the albums, they decided that, no, no. This would be the official one instead of the British EP. Maybe because it's like more of a full length album. So nowadays it is considered as an official Beatles album. And it does, you know, it's really cool. I love the gatefold. Um, if you, I don't have the British EP, but if you look at it, it's only got this middle bit, none of this around the outside. <coughs> Oh, I'm getting a cold. It's not the coronavirus, but it's a cold. Um, which is just cool. And I watch this channel called Final Rewind. He's really great. His videos are high quality. And he wears his suit. Much more high quality than mine. But in his video, he had a version of this album where the book it comes with was part of the inner, inner sleeve. The gatefold. So you would open it up and the book would be, I can't do it, <laughs> the book would be attached on the inside instead of being a, a freestanding. But if you hadn't guessed <laughs> by now, it comes with a book, which is a great little book. I love that picture of George Harrison. And it basically tells the story, not that, that picture, no, brain, that picture. <laughs> it's reversed. Um, it just tells the story of the movie and has lots of different screenshots of pictures from the film. And then of course, what my channel's about, we have the record, the Capitol Records. It is just a regular black vinyl, so I won't get it out. But I love the uh, rainbow around the outside. It is fun to watch it spin around. And Capital Records, I don't know where I spoke about this earlier, my memory really is that bad, but the Beatles released their stuff through Capital Records in America, and what they did in America and Canada, and probably other places, maybe South America, I don't, I'm not sure, they would take, let's say, Help, Help would be split up into two different albums, mixed in with other songs from the older albums and stuff like that, and when the Beatles come to standardise their stuff, um, the British stuff was mostly, you know, the official Beatles release, besides Magical Mystery Tour, which is just an interesting fact. So today, if you went and picked up Rubber Soul, it would start with Drive My Car, but the US version that was released in 1967, no, 66, it would start with, uh, what, what does it start with? It starts with, I've just seen a face. But... As for songs on this album, I mean, Magical Mystery Tour is a really great opener. It's so happy and upbeat, and it's just such a great way to open your album. And then The Fall on the Hill, one of my favourite Paul McCartney songs. I love the chorus and the kazoos. I think that's, yeah, that's just brilliant. And then uh, Flying is great. Blue Jay Way is absolutely beautiful. Uh, George Harrison and his Indian influenced music is just amazing. There's a song called The Inner Light, which was the B side to. Oh, it was the B side to uh, Madonna, Lady Madonna, which is a very Indian influenced Beatles song. And I don't have the past masters you can find it on. But I just want to tell you that it is a beautiful song. That was a B side, and you have to go and listen to it. Anyway. Uh, I am the walrus. Your mother should know. Uh, your mother should know. It's a really catchy, upbeat, almost fifties style song, which is just beautiful. I love that. And then, of course, I am the walrus. Sorry, everyone, I was interrupted again. So, 
there's a rumour going around that the walrus is poor, but I'm not sure about that. And then, you know, the lyrics, fantastic. John Lennon was fed up with people uh, interpreting, trying to find every little hidden meaning in his lyrics. They would fucking scan read every word and try and find the meaning. And that's why he wrote I Am The Walrus, because he was just fed up with people doing it. So it's a completely nonsensical song. It's not meant to make sense. And I love the mix between the stereo and mono. I think it's the second verse when the... Uh, is it... I think it's a Shakespeare quote comes in. And it switches to a mono, which is great. And then Hello Goodbye, one of my favourite Beatles songs. Strawberry Fields Forever, I've Been There, it's perfect. Penny Lane, again, I've Been There, an amazing song. Now, Strawberry Fields Forever and Penny Lane were released as singles for the Sgt. Peppers album and they were considered to be on Sgt. Peppers in the UK but uh, back then it was felt as cheap to have you know these songs released as singles and then to sort of nickel and dime people by having the same songs on an album basically making people buy the songs again was something they didn't really want to do in the 60s can you believe that and just you know uh, Baby or a Rich Man is great and All You Need Is Love. Now, I have a love-hate relationship with All You Need Is Love because it's on three of their albums for me. I count the Love album because I listen to it a lot and I just, I hear it too much. As much as it's a brilliant song, I, I hear it too much and that, that's more my problem. But yeah, this album is absolutely perfect. It is brilliant and you do need to go and listen to it. Uh, thanks for watching. Join me next time where I will talk about the White Album for maybe an hour or two. Take care, everyone.